It started with this puzzle. Sooner or later, a puzzling empirical regularity confronts scholars of ethnic conflict. Despite ethnic diversity, some places, nations, regions, towns, villages remain peaceful, whereas others with the same diversity experience frequent outbursts of violence. So variations, right? Similarly, some multi-ethnic societies, after maintaining a long record of peace, explode all of a sudden. Yugoslavia, former Yugoslavia. Indonesia after Suharto. Kashmir was quiet for a long time before it exploded in 89, December. Um, so uh, variations across space and time uh, were not something that scholars studied in the field of ethnic conflict. Um, there were some pieces here and there, but um, the book I wrote was... Uh, um, and I'm not over-advertising the book, uh, it was really the first systematic treatment with the idea of variation in trying to understand why peace obtains in some, um, some spatial units, however they're defined. So, you know, urban spatial units, village, villages, regions, etc. And, uh, and uh, um, roughly similar, if not exactly similar spatial units, um, which have frequent outbursts of writing. And um, this puzzle then, um, this puzzle then um, led to an investigation by Stephen Wilkinson, who was at Harvard at that time uh, as, a, as a junior researcher, and I had joined as a junior professor, so we set up this data set which is publicly available now from ICPSR. Um, ICPSR is Inter-University Consortium for Political and Social Research. You can download it if you're a member. And it's been downloaded, it's been used a lot, this data set. This data set um, basically put together um, a series on all Hindu-Muslim riots between 1950 and 1995 in India. Um, uh, scholars of ethnic conflict do not trust police data. It's actually a first principle. Anywhere in the world, police data is not to be trusted. Mm -hmm. uh, for a whole variety of reasons. Uh, some have to do with, um, with uh, police biases. Some uh, have to do with political pressures on the police to record in, some way, in, in, in certain ways. But well, even if bias does not exist, and even if there are no political pressures, the problem is that the, the way categories are constructed by the police are very hard, those categories are very hard to interpret, and they jumble up, they mix up all kinds of incidents as communal incidents, and in any case, in a, sometimes, for example, caste conflict is reported as communal, uh, there is, of course, no disaggregation between Sikh, Mus Sikh, in Sikh Muslim violence and Hindu Muslim violence, etc., etc. So you, if you're studying Hindu Muslim violence, let's say, um, police data, leaving aside the question of biases and political pressures, police data are not usable no. hmm? in, a, in, a, in a scholarly sense. So we put together this data, and the only way to create the series was to go through newspapers and we ran, we gave um, the so-called national newspapers, Indian Express and, uh, and, uh, um, and the Times of India in this period. Now you can actually call the Hindu today also a national newspaper. We gave them some tests, which I'll be happy to go into, to establish which one of those, which whether Indian Express, for which I write regularly now, or Times of India, in this period, 50 to 95, could be called what is what uh, what um, in many parts of the world is called a journal of record, right? And it tells how the Times of India successfully passed the test, um, not entirely, but very substantially. 
So on the basis of Times of India, we put together uh, this series for all of India. Uh, we were very surprised by how much Times of India was reporting, not only from around Mumbai, where it's published, from around Delhi, where it's published, but also from far, uh, uh, far away uh, uh, towns, even very small towns of Assam and, and, uh, and, uh, and Andhra Pradesh um, um, and, and villages of UP, etc. Uh, you'll see that uh, villages will play a very important role in our analysis and, and, uh, and we'll have some time to discuss um, how much to trust uh, uh, Times of India or Indian Express, whether that matter, any English newspaper in villages. We'll, we'll have we'll time to look into it. But um, I, I, can't, I, I tried to blow it up. Uh, I couldn't do it. Uh, I couldn't get a bigger picture. But I can explain this to you and it will be very clear. The, on this axis, on um, x-axis, on the, on the horizontal axis, you have years 1950 to 1995. And on, on the left vertical axis, Y1, you have number of deaths. And on, on this, uh, on, on the right vertical axis, you have number of riots. And uh, you can't see it here, but the bars represent the number of deaths. And the, and the line, the line, it's actually blue in the, it's not coming out as blue here. Uh, you, uh, the line is is the number of riots, right? And uh, a simple conclusion from this would be that 1950 through roughly 1976-77, there is no trend in urban Hindu-Muslim rioting. There's no trend, meaning if you drew a line, it would be actually a straight line. And the ups and downs could be read as random not systematic, right? So this would be, uh, um, and you could, there are of course reasons for riots, a riot in, in, in Jabalpur, which attracted a lot of attention, this one, and a 69, I think this is 69, this is Ahmedabad, hmm? uh, 69, very extensively uh, studied. Um, but as a national pattern, as a national pattern, this is, um, th there is no trend here. The trend is clearly here. So if you drew a line after the late 70s onwards, it would be a rising curve. This would, be a, this, would be, this would look like this. Right? And what you do, those of you who have done statistical analysis know that, that to understand what the trend is in a 10-year period, right? you try and draw a line and see if it's a rising trend or declining trend or no trend. Hmm? So this would be a flat line. This would be a rising trend. So nationally speaking, something happened in the late 70s and unleashed a process. Right? Nationally speaking. And we can discuss what that, what those, what, what, what that thing was or what that political turn was. Right? We can discuss that. But let's first note clearly that this is what's going on here. Now, um, uh, scholars uh, at Harvard Business School and London School of Economics have used our methodology and extended this to 2010 by now. It's the same methodology. And then you can see something interesting. That there is a declining trend after 92, 93 till 2010. The only exception is 2002, that is Gujarat. Right? Basically, since the destruction of the, since the riots surrounding the destruction of their, their mosque, India has had very little Hindu-Muslim rioting. Right? And, and that happy news was broken essentially by the 2002 Gujarat riots. Now, if you extend this further, I think they're completing, um, they will have it done till the end of 2013 in, in the next month or so. And we can get, uh, we can extend it further. But 2013 will look like, will not have 175 deaths, will have about 100 deaths. So it will be, this bar will be somewhere here. Right? So, there is, so this is the pattern 
this is the pattern across time, temporal, right? Temporal trend. So this is a trend, trend over time. Now, there is also a way to split this into in, in various other ways. Hmm? And the most interesting for us was that rural deaths were 4 to 8% of total deaths, despite the fact that 70% 70 of India still lived in villages in 1995. It's still 68% six, six, by 2011 census. Um, and that's the census report. Uh, some scholars would argue now that it's India is about 64-65%, uh, only 64-65% rural, 35% urban already, and by some yardsticks almost 40% urban, but that's a different issue. And 85% did in 1950, so where most of Indians lived, Hindu-Muslim rioting was not a problem. This does not mean, let us recall once again, this does not mean that prejudice is not a problem. But prejudice as a category is to be separated from rioting. Right? And, and so this is not a claim about uh, no Hindu-Muslim prejudice in rural India. This is simply a claim about no, very little rioting in urban India. Riots are an urban phenomenon, and you might ask whether this is an artifact of reportage. Did Times of India, can any newspaper, national newspaper, especially an English newspaper, penetrate villages as much as it can penetrate the cities? Is it an artifact of, of reportage? Hmm? We don't deny it could be so, but we are willing to say the following. Suppose it is underreported. It's only 4 to 8 percent, right? Suppose it's underreported by a factor of 3. Hmm. Right? Suppose that's the case. Even then, what will you get? You'll get 30 percent of deaths, 24, 25 percent of deaths at best, right? In the, in the, in the villages and 75 percent of deaths still in the city. And this kind of exercise is normally, uh, it's very common in statistical work. If you can't accurately estimate, you say, let's suppose it is an underestimate by, by a third or by, you know. And, sup and if you suppose that and, and then we adjust our numbers, does the result change? The result doesn't change. Right? The overall result doesn't change. So it's a primarily urban phenomenon. But, what, and this is where, incidentally, if you read Ashish Nandi, Ashish Nandi cites this a lot now to make the claim that this is a problem of modern India. Traditional India knew how to handle Hindu-Muslim differences. Nandi is famous for this. We are now in all his recent writings, he cites this data the, from, from our, our data set. But, he, but where Nandi stops is actually where we begin in many ways. We say, I say, that in urban India too, riots are heavily locally concentrated. While you can say it's an urban phenomenon, there is wide dispersion there. Hmm? And to show you um, what that means, you don't have to look at all of this. I want you to look at um, this column only. We asked, I asked a simple question to understand how it's distributed the violence in urban India, in how many cities of, in towns of India were there at least 50 deaths, at least, many more, right? at least 50 deaths in, in, in riots, in at least 10 riots, at least 50 deaths in at least 10 riots over five five-year periods. What would be the logic for this? What's the method underlying this madness? It's very simple. You can have a riot in any given city for a, for a whole variety of reasons in which 100 people were killed or 200 people were killed. From the perspective of trends, that, could be, that would be called an accident. Right? What this kind of question allows you to do is pick up tendency, intensity as well as persistence. Right? So a body, this is a body is prone to certain kinds of allergies or certain kinds of, reacts badly to certain kinds of stimuli, right? Similarly, the city is reacting to something called Hindu-Muslim differences in a particular way repeatedly. And if you ask that question, then the cities that, 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 uh, that meet this criterion, the cities are only eight. Mumbai, 
अहमदाबाद अलीगढ़ हैदराबाद मेरठ बड़ौदा डेली एंड कोलकाता ना कैलकाता विल ड्रॉप आउट कैलकाता विल ड्रॉप आउट इफ यू डू 1970 टू 1995 राइट सो इन मेनी वेज हाउ यू योर योर टाइम पीरियड विल आल्सो डिटरमिन द रिजल्ट राइट सो नोबडी एसोसिएट्स कैलकाता विद राइट प्रोननेस एनी मोर Calcutta had the worst riot of 20th century, which was nearly a civil war between Hindus and Muslims between 46 and 47, which lasted nearly a year, ended by Gandhi's famous Calcutta fast. Gandhi was not in Delhi at the time of India's independence. Gandhi was in Calcutta trying to stop a civil war between Hindus and Muslims, which he successfully did. So Calcutta in the first half of the 20th century is very different from the second half in the second half also in the 50s and 60s riots continue not very large ones but they continue and uh, and then towards the nine uh, towards the 90s also begin to get some riots in some 70s you get some riots but all very small but these are the eight cities which qualify there are others for example see Jamshedpur has 198 bhivandi has 194 surat one set of riots basically around in in january is one set of riots in december of 92 and january of 93 after the destruction of the mosque just one set of riots in this whole period but 192 deaths now surat cannot be called a riot prone city right they just an illustration of the point i was making now if you do that then something like this appears these eight cities account for 46% of all deaths in hindu muslim riots which leads to what conclusion that, that at one level it's it's certainly right to say it's an urban phenomenon but at another level a more precise statement would be that it is a problem of some cities <laughs> 